Hey guys, I'm Stuart. In this video, I want to talk about the term green energy that we often hear, but we don't always understand. Why is it green and why does everyone talk about it so much? I'll go over the different types of green energy, what's good about them, what's not good about them, and talk about how it literally might save us in the next few decades. First of all, let's define the term green energy. It is energy that is first renewable, which means it is derived from infinite sources such as the sun, wind, water flow, or even the warmth of the earth. Second, it's clean. It doesn't produce greenhouse gas emissions or hurt the environment, which is why it's called green in the first place. Green energy doesn't have to be renewable though. Nuclear power is considered clean, but the material for it is limited. Renewable energy, on the other hand, is not always clean. For example, large hydropower plants can damage the environment severely. So what are the main types of green energy? Scientists usually distinguish five of them. The first one is hydropower or hydroelectric power. It is by far the most widespread type of green energy. Hydropower harnesses the power of water in motion. Back in the day, we had water mills, which we used to grind wheat into flour. Today, the water pushes the blades of large turbines and it powers generators. Hydropower is renewable, but it's not always considered clean because large hydro plants deal severe damage to the environment. The world's greatest power station is Three Gorges Dam in China that spans the Yangtze River. The amount of power that it produces within a year is equal to what you get from 20 million tons of coal. However, its construction caused the flooding of several villages across Yangtze. Millions were forced to relocate, and the deforestation of the area surrounding the dam decreased by a half from 1950 to 2002. The dam caused great damage to biodiversity in this region, and apparently made Beiji, a Chinese river dolphin, extinct. Freshwater fish suffer the most from hydropower stations because they affect water temperature and flow regime. Dams also block the migration of species like salmon. On average, one in five fish dies from passing hydroelectric turbines, and even the best existing turbines still kill about 5-10% to of passerby fish. Nevertheless, hydroelectric power is very important for us. There are countries in Africa and South America that rely solely on hydropower. Today, this type of energy develops slower than others. The reason for this is that it's not completely green and it's location dependent. You always need some type of body of water for it. The second type of renewable energy is wind power. Engineers have devised turbines that turn wind into electricity and send it into our grid. If the hydro stations are like water mills, then wind turbines are modern windmills. It's a very efficient and relatively cheap way to get energy. Today, it accounts for around 20% of renewable energy generation. The biggest problem with it is its variability. It's hard to predict how much energy exactly you're going to harvest with your turbines. The wind may blow or it may not. Lots of birds get killed by the turbines. Basically every 3 gigawatt hours from a wind turbine is one dead bird. Besides, the turbines are loud and the people don't like living next to them. The third type of green energy is solar power. Solar panels capture photons from the sun and convert them into electricity. It's a complicated process where we have a video where we can explain it in detail. Don't forget to subscribe so that you're not going to miss it. Anyway, currently solar energy stands for about 10% of the world's renewable energy generation and it's growing the fastest of all types. The reason for this is the fact that solar panels have significantly dropped down in cost. 10 years ago, solar energy was the most expensive type of energy and today it's actually the cheapest. Another big advantage is that you can install them anywhere as long as there's sunlight. Currently, solar panel systems are the most popular in China, USA, Germany, and they grow fast in South America and across Europe. The downsides of solar energy is their low efficiency. You need a lot of space to build a powerful installation. Also, the manufacturing process of solar panels requires toxic components, and we don't have a good way to dispose of old solar panels yet. Solar panels also suffer from variability, though not as much as wind turbines. Panels work as long as there's sunlight, and the map of solar irradiance allows for more precise predictions. The next type is geothermal energy. Under the Earth's crust, there are water reservoirs that are heated by the core of the planet. This water gets really hot, well above the boiling point. In some places, it reveals itself as steam coming from the ground. 
People knew about the existence of these hot water reservoirs for thousands of years and used the heat for cooking and warming their homes. In geothermal power plants, the steam turns the turbine and powers the generator. Geothermal plants are expensive to build, but the energy itself ends up being very cheap. Unlike solar and wind, geothermal energy is constantly available. The bad things about it are that it requires drilling and it's very location dependent. You can only use it in the areas near tectonic plate boundaries. In addition, some locations may cool down after decades of use. The USA uses geothermal energy the most, and it's also very big in Iceland. There are also biomass and biofuels that became a separate type of renewable energy, or sometimes two types. Biomass plants use things like wood or agricultural waste and burn them to generate energy. Just like fossil fuels, biomass releases greenhouse gas when burned. However, the plants that are the source of the biomass capture almost the same amount of carbon dioxide while growing through photosynthesis as released when biomass is burned. The difference is that fossil fuels increase the amount of carbon in the atmosphere outside the biogenic carbon cycle. Biomass combustion is within that cycle, which makes biomass a carbon neutral energy source. Organic materials can also be transformed into biofuels, which might be used for cars in the future. For now, biofuel generation develops too slowly. Biofuel meets around 4% of the world's transport fuel demand. The rise in this demand so far greatly outpaces growth of biofuel production. Nuclear energy also deserves to be mentioned. Nuclear plants use uranium as a fuel. It's processed into small ceramic pellets and they are stacked together into fuel rods. Usually over 200 of these rods form a fuel assembly and a reactor core can be made of a couple hundred assemblies, depending on power level. The reactor contains and controls nuclear fission, the process which produces heat and radiation. The heat is used to boil water into steam, which turns the blade of a steam turbine and we get electricity, much like with other types of energy. There are over 440 commercial nuclear reactors in the world. 92 of them are in the USA. The pros of nuclear energy is the fact that it's a constant energy production with little to no carbon emissions. Nuclear plants provide high power output for very little land footprint. However, you have to get uranium somewhere, which means it's not renewable energy and thus it's not green. The upfront costs of a nuclear plant are very high. After three to four years in the reactor, uranium becomes nuclear waste, which you have to store somewhere. Finally, if things go wrong, a nuclear plant becomes a living nightmare. Chernobyl is the most famous example of that. Well, these are the five main types of green energy and a famous nuclear energy. As you can see, each type has its own drawbacks. And despite the name, none of them are completely green or clean. So maybe green energy isn't that great after all? Well, compared to the impact of fossil fuels on our environment, these drawbacks are minor. As you know, when you burn oil, coal, and natural gas, a large amount of carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. These are the infamous greenhouse gas emissions that everyone's talking about. Now, let's just quickly explain why they are so dangerous. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is what caused the greenhouse effect to occur. Sunlight lands on Earth without any trouble and warms it, but the atmosphere prevents the heat from returning to space. As a result, we get a warmer climate. The higher the concentration of carbon dioxide, the stronger the effect is. Currently, the level of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere is 1.5 times greater than it was 200 years ago. Scientists blame it on humans. Most nations recognize climate change as a real threat, which is why they work together to slow down and really reverse global warming. You might have heard about the Paris Agreement which was signed in 2016 by almost every country. The parties agreed on working towards keeping the annual rise in global temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius above industrial levels. Ideally, we want to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Green energy is the world's hope to stray away from fossil fuels and stop climate change. Some European countries have almost completely switched to renewable energy. For instance, Norway has had hydroelectric power covering almost all of its needs, and Iceland uses fossil fuels only for transport. However, scientists worry that the switch is happening too slowly. Lots of experts say that the recent drought in Europe is the result of ongoing deforestation, 
and a sign of things to come. Will we be able to endure more summer seasons like the one that we had in 2022? What if we won't be able to limit the rise in global temperature and the glaciers will melt? If half of Europe drowns, where will all the people go? While scientists still argue about ways to fight climate change, switching to green energy fast might well be no less than a question of mankind's survival. And I feel like it's important to keep talking about it, to drag the problem into the light, to vote for people who recognize the threat. Maybe then we do stand a chance. That's all for this one. I hope you learned something new. I certainly did while I was making it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to check out our magazine. We've got lots of great articles about green and solar energy in particular. And also come follow us on Instagram. All the links are in our description below and I'll see you next time.